You are tuned in to Greater Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart. together amen come on let's enter this service on one accord do me a favor clap your hands let's have some church hallelujah he is worthy to be praised hallelujah come on we're moving together this morning let's make one big choir oh magnify the lord for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Say that to me, say, oh, magnify the Lord. For he, For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, sing it like a minute, say, oh. oh. Blessed be the rock. Hosanna. Blessed be. Blessed be the rock. Oh, magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. For he Oh, magnify. Those of you joining us online, you can sing with us. Say Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Say Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Listen, there is no God like our God. There is no God like our God. He is absolutely awesome, working wonders all the time. There is no God like our God. Say, there is no God. There is no God. Working wonders all the time. There is no God. Say there is no God. Like our God. There is no God. Like our God. He is absolutely awesome. Working wonders all the time. You used to say it like this. No one can save you. Like our God. No one can save you like our God. He is absolutely awesome, working wonders all the time. No one can save you like our God. Say no one can save you like God. No one can save you like our God. He is absolutely awesome, working wonders all the time. Just find two or three people and say, neighbor, I came to praise the Lord. 
this morning. Come on, don't be shy. You can talk to your neighbor. There is no God. Hallelujah. He moves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
in the wind, in the storms. Yes, hallelujah. There's no God like our God. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. He's holy. He's mighty. He reigns. Hallelujah. The ancient Zion's king. He reigns today. Praise God. Hallelujah. We praise his name. For there is no God like our God. Hallelujah. Praise him, praise him, praise him. We give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Praise God. And we worship him in the beauty of holiness. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And we enter into his courts with praise. We are thankful unto him. And we bless his holy and his righteous name. By the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ we prevail. We prevail, praise God. Over every sin, over every iniquity, over every sickness, over every disease. We prevail. Praise God. We are going to the throne of grace in Jesus' name. And we're going to be led there by Minister Michael Henderson. And our scripture reading will be done by Minister Peter Linton in Jesus' name. Praise God. No God like our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No God. I bring it. Thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for another time of worship, oh God. We come into this house, oh God, to give you glory, oh God. We come in this house to thank you, oh God, for how you kept us another week, oh God. You brought us safely together once again, oh God, hallelujah. Lord, it's because of your grace and mercy, oh God, that we have not been consumed, oh God. And we thank you for your new mercies every morning, oh God. Lord, we come to you now, oh God, to say thank you once again, oh God, for the blood that just shed on Calvary Cross. How you died for our sins, oh God, to give us freedom, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, that that blood never loses its power, Jesus. Oh God, we ask you right now, oh God, to come in our mix, oh God. Somebody came burdened down, oh God. Somebody came heavy hearted, oh God. Lord, somebody needs a miracle today, Jesus. Somebody is sick in their body, Jesus. We know, oh God, that you are a healer, Jesus. You said in your word, Lord, of your people that are called by your name would humble themselves and pray, Jesus, and seek your face. You would sit and tr 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 confess their sins, oh God, that you would deliver them and you would heal the land, oh God. Lord, we thank you right now, oh God, for your grace and your mercy, oh God. Oh, we ask you right now, oh God, to go in the highways and the byways, oh God. Lord, touch the backslide of the day, Jesus. Lord, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Touch those, oh God, that came here today, oh God, in need of, vic of victory, oh God, in need of salvation, oh God. Touch somebody's heart today, Jesus. Lord, we need you, oh God, to work in our mix, oh God. Have your way in this service, oh God. Bless our pastor today as he brings forth the word, oh God. Touch him, oh God. Give him a word for your people, oh God, that it might strengthen us and keep us, oh God. Lord God, that we might walk in your word, oh God, and live according to your promises, oh God. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we ask you, oh God, hallelujah, to look down upon those, oh God, that are going through this war, Jesus. Lord, people are dying carelessly, oh God. Lord, we ask you, oh God, to do something in the mix of your people, oh God. Lord, we know, oh God, that you sit high and you look low, oh God, and you can do all things but fail, Jesus. Oh God, in your name, Jesus, we ask you right now, Lord, touch, oh God, those families that lost loved ones, oh God. Lord, somebody's bereaved today, oh God. Lord, comfort them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, have your way, oh God. Save some soul today, Jesus. We need you, Lord. We can't make it without you, Jesus. Heal the land, oh God. We need you to heal us, Jesus. Oh God, right now, Lord, move from heart to heart and mind to mind, Jesus. 
touch somebody today, Jesus. Oh, God, we need you right now, God. Hallelujah, we need you, Jesus. Say in the blood of Jesus is against you. Loose your hold off of God's people. Lord, have your way, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. And we thank you, oh God, and we praise you, oh God, for what you've already done. And God, we thank and we praise you, oh God, for what we believe in you to do, Jesus. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we know that you're a way maker. We know that you're a burden bearer. We know that you're a heart fixer, Jesus. We know you can do anything but fail, Jesus. Lord, have your way, Lord. Somebody needs a financial blessing, Jesus. Lord God, somebody came with expectation today looking for you to do something in their life. Somebody's, oh God, troubled in mind, troubled in heart, oh God, sickness, oh God. In their body, Jesus, do something for us, Lord. And we won't fail to give you the praise. We won't fail to give you all the glory. We won't fail to give you all the honor, Jesus, because you're worthy, God. You're worthy of all the praise. You're worthy of all the glory, oh God. You're worthy of all the honor. Oh God, we thank you now. Oh God, hallelujah. Bless our sister pastor in his absence, oh God. Oh God, oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless each and every member, oh God. Bless each and every minister, oh God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, have your way in this service, oh God. Set somebody free, Jesus. Set somebody free, Jesus. Loose the hold of the enemy right now. Say that the blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Lord, have your way. Lord, set somebody free. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hey, hey, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you believe that prayer, say hallelujah. If you believe that God is able, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe with God all things are possible, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Time for the scripture. As the hush see those that enter the temple, we'll turn our Bibles to Psalms 149 and 150. One of our, our former pastor. Hallelujah. Scripture. We're going to read it this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the word of the Lord. Read, praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise him, his name in a dance. Let them sing praise unto him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in the glory. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. Let the high praises of God be upon their mouth. And the two-headed sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. And punishment upon the people. To bind their kings with chains. And the nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them that the judgment written is honor of all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him in mighty heart. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him of the sound of the timbrel. Praise him of the long sousing harp and the harp. Praise him upon the timbrel and the dance. Praise him upon the string instrument and organ. Praise him upon the loud organ. And praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Let everything, let everything, let everything that have breath. Praise he the Lord. Clap your hands and give up praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
me over again. Wash me over again. Lord, wash me over. Wash me over again, Lord God, in your precious blood. Wash me, Father, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Oh, Lord, our oh God, wash me over. I'm a higher. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, wash me, Lord. Wash me over again. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, Lord God. By the power of your blood. For the blood prevails. Oh, yes, Lord God, your blood prevails, Father. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wash us, Father, over again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Wash us, Father. Wash us, Father. Wash us, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, our God, we give you glory, we give you glory, we give you glory. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you. Woo. So appropriate. Praise God. Oh, Hallelujah. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Yes, Lord. I've been washed. Satama. <laughs> yes, Lord God. If you want to, Father, wash me over. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The blood prevails. Praise the Lord. Sister Jennifer. Praise God. God bless you for that. He was dressed all in your beautiful red and everything in Jesus' name. God bless you. Wash us over, Father. Wash us over. Hallelujah. Cleanse us, purge us, purify us. Yes, Lord God. Holy! Satama. Holy. In Jesus' name. Our announcements for this Sunday. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Someone, excuse me, needs to move their car. Uh -huh. And the license plate number CVC 5358. And the CVC 5358, please move your car. You're blocking. The announcements for today. Thank you, Jesus. Women's Council Thanksgiving Outreach. The Women's Council will hold its annual Thanksgiving outreach on Wednesday, November 22nd. If you or someone you know is in need and would like a dinner, we ask that you register before Wednesday, November 15th. Please call the church office Friday at 212-866-1700. Again, that's 212-866-1700 or email the Greater Refuge Temple Church at gmail.com. For more information, you can see Sister Joan McCafferty. Global Missions Thanksgiving Drive, Coat Drive. The Greater Refuge Temple Global Missions will hold its annual Coat Drive on November 22nd. Please donate new and gently used coats for men, women, and children. Scarves and gloves will also be accepted. You may bring items for donation up until Sunday, November 19th. You can uh, see Minister George Harriet or myself, Elder Chris, for more details. We have received quite a bit, and we thank God so much for your giving. We're going to host that on the 22nd. The time will be from 12 to 4, 12 noon to 4 p.m. Veterans Day. Please note that the Greater Refuge Temple Church will be closed tomorrow, Monday, November 13th, in honor of Veterans Day. However, our virtual noonday prayer will still be held via conference call number 646 
646-349-2869. Again, that's 646-349-2869. And I say to all veterans, happy Veterans Day. Praise God. And thank you. Praise God for your service. Just the veterans stand. Veterans. Praise God. Veterans and military personnel. Praise the Lord. Please stand. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for your service. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. When people tell me, thank you for your service, I tell them, it was a blessing. It was a blessing to serve. Praise God. I was in the U.S. Army, but now I'm in the Army of the Lord. Praise God. Hey, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Got another calling. Thank you, Jesus. Got another calling in Jesus' name. Shatama. Oh, yes. Glory. Shatama higher. Thank you, Jesus. All night prayer. Global Missions will be having all night prayer. Woo. All night prayer. November 17th. This coming Friday. From 11.55 to 6 a.m. in the morning. Or until God tells us to stop. Oh, glory. Shatama. Yes, Lord Jesus. Come and join us. In Jesus' name. Telephone number 857 799-9399. I'm sorry. Let me go again. 857-799-9399. The Lord is moving. The sister told me a testimony this morning. The sister told me a testimony this morning. The Lord moving. Praise God. Miracle signs and wonders. Miracle signs and wonders. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord is moving. Praise the Lord. Our sister pastor, Bishop William Wilkins Jr., will be celebrating his 50th, praise God, half a century, 50th birthday and 30 years in ministry on Saturday. That's impressive. December 16th. If you would like to attend the celebrations, Tickets will be sold in the back of the church following morning service. Free transportation to the venue will also be provided for the first 50 individuals who register. Please note that the bus is filling up quickly. It's filling up quickly. So if you get registered, the first 50 people, praise God, will be able to go free in Jesus' name. Ride the bus in Jesus' name. We have two other announcements, praise God, and uh, from the youth department, Sister Charity Torres, praise God, will address you, and uh, we have uh, Deacon Neville Roseman with a tribute to Bishop William Lee Bonner, Bishop Bonner tribute in Jesus' name, amen. Receive them. Praise the Lord, saints, family, and friends. As you know, I'm up here for our Winter Wonderland event. Amen? Amen? The holiday season is vastly approaching, and the youth department in the ABYPU is looking forward to hosting our annual Winter Wonderland event on December 9th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. For those who do not know what Winter Wonderland is, let me tell you a little bit about it. This event allows the youth department to give back to the community. It's a day of fun. We have arts and crafts. We speak about the love of God. We give away clothes. And we also give each child about two to three toys. We are expecting around 200 children to attend. We have invited different shelters. We have invited the community. 
And we have also invited our church family. Amen? Amen. This is where I need your help. I need our church family to represent. I need everyone in the building. For those who have already, we thank you. We need everyone else to give $20 plus two toys. We need both. We need the $20 and we need the two toys. Amen? Amen. 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 I think everyone who has already given, we really appreciate it. But we still need those who have not to still give. And those who are led to give more, please do. <laughs> we have a quarter to make, and I am a little bit behind. So we definitely, definitely, definitely need your help. For anyone who wants to volunteer, please see myself. I'll be at the back of the church. Also, anyone in the youth department, you can give your name to volunteer. Volunteering, you would... Um, serve food, maybe help with the clothes, help with the toys, and then help decorate the day before. So those who are interested in dec um, volunteering, please see myself or anyone in the youth department to assist. So, once again, we definitely need, the date is December 9th from 2 p.m. to 7. We definitely need $20 plus two toys. Amen. Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord everyone. Today we commemorate the late Apostle Bishop William Lee Barner. Today marks 102 years. He was born November 12th, 1921. Bishop Barner went home to be with the Lord on April 3rd uh, 2015. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassion fails not. Great is his faithfulness unto us. The Lord is faithful. 44 years plus, 44 years ago, I walked through these doors of the Greater Refuge Temple Hallelujah. Bishop Bono ran a revival and I was baptized. And as my friend would say, the rest is history. Bishop Bono was a man of faith. And we would entitle this tribute a man of faith. Second Corinthians Chapter 5, verse 7 says, We walk by faith and not by sight. Last week, Bishop Wright gave a message from the book of Hebrews entitled, By Faith Alone. We did nothing to gain salvation, and we can do nothing to keep salvation. We are dead. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. What we do, what, what good we do, is a result of our salvation. For by grace are ye saved through faith, not of works, lest any man, lest any of us should boast. Ephesians chapter 2. And we will be rewarded for our results, which is based on the measure of our faith. In other words, it's not faith and works. It's not faith or works. It's faith that works. It's not faith and works. It's not faith or works. It's faith that works. Bishop William Lee Bonner was a man of faith and his faith was seen by his works. God is not looking for extraordinary people. He is looking for ordinary people to do 
extraordinary things. Hebrews, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 6 states that without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. In chapter 11 of Hebrews we read, By faith Noah prepared an ark to the saving of his house and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. By faith Abraham obeyed and went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise. By faith Moses chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. In those heroes of faith, we can add Bishop W. L. Barner, who by faith migrated from a small southern town named Milledgeville, Georgia, to come to a big metropolitan city that never sleeps. By faith, he left his family tradition and went from becoming a farmer to being a preacher. By faith, he became the chief architect and set out remodeling what is now known as the Greater Refuge Temple. By faith, he was saved under the pastorate of his pastor and founder, Bishop R.C. Lawson, and progressed from chauffeur to chief apostle of the churches of our Lord Jesus Christ. By faith, by faith he received the fivefold ministry of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. These all accomplished by faith and by faith pastored five churches, built a southern headquarters that included a church, family life center, and a Bible school, and continued steadfastly praying, preaching, laying hands on thousands. And lest we forget, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 to 14. Verses 1 and 2 says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He believed it. He believed it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. He sacrificed much and his faith was unwavering. Bishop Barna was an ordinary man whom God used to do extraordinary things. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. In, in the words of our dearly beloved late mother, Mother Dorothy Anderson, he was God's man with God's plan in his hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. By faith, by faith, he will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Apostle Bishop W. L. Barna. By faith, a man of faith. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Deacon Rose. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A man of faith. Hallelujah. Man of faith. Apostle William Lee Barner. Man of faith. God makes the ordinary extraordinary. God makes the natural supernatural. Praise God. And we are, if you see, sanctified and Holy Ghost feel, we are supernatural because we have God dwelling in us. We have God living in us. Ordinary becomes extraordinary. The natural becomes supernatural in Jesus' name. 
Let us prepare our hearts for giving. Praise God. Ushers are now handing out uh, tithe envelopes. And what you give to the Lord, he will give you more to give. And there are several ways to give. You can give electronically via the GiveLify app at Greater Refuge Temple with the picture of our pastor, Bishop Charles E. Wright, Sr., superimposed on the church. Or you can mail in your tithes and offerings to Greater Refuge Temple, 2081 Adam Clayton Powell, Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 127. Or you can bring your offerings and your tithes here to the church during the week and be directed by Brother Calvin or Minister Hutchison, both security, and place your offering, praise God, in the offering box. Amen. With your gifts or your devices in your hand, let us pray. Most high God, eternal Father, creator, sustainer, and upholder of the universe. The earth is yours, Father God, and the fullness thereof, the world, and we that dwell therein. Everything, praise God, that dwells therein. We give to you, Father God, our tithes. We give you our offerings. We give you, Lord God, our sacrifices of praise. You said give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We ask your Father to open up the windows of heaven, open up the floodgates of heaven, and pour out blessings upon us, Father God, as we give. In the mighty name of Jesus. So much, Lord God, pour it out so much that we will not be able to contain it all. We have so much, Lord God, we have so much that we have to share it with others in Jesus' name. Supply every need, Lord God, according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen.
you, Lord. May God bless you tremendously. May God bless you mightily for your giving. In Jesus' name, we pray. Just keep, praise God, uh, persons who have lost loved ones in your prayers. Uh, sister Dolores Polidor lost her sister. And so I'm asking you to keep her in your prayers and all those others who have lost loved ones. Uh, even though the home going is over, people still grieve. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord said this morning to me, the storm, the storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. So whatever you're going through, hallelujah, the storm is passing over. Hallelujah. God is moving upon that situation for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The supernatural one is moving upon it. That problem with the child, the grandchild. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's passing over. Shout out my heart. The problem, praise God. And your body is passing over. Praise God. God is sending healing. God is moving. God is moving mightily in the land. In Jesus' name. The storm is passing over in Jesus' name. We are now going to have another selection from our wonderful prayer team, our praise team, praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we sing beautifully. Praise God. You bless us. Praise God every Sunday. And then the next voice we will hear is that of our illustrious pastor. Praise God. And prophet, praise God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Bishop Dr. Charles E. Wright Sr. In Jesus' name, amen. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Come on, clap your hands here.
mouth and say yes, Lord. Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and we give God thanks for another Lord's Day we thank God for another week that he has blessed us to be in the land of the living with a reasonable portion of health and strength that we might magnify him lift our voices together in praise unto God thank you Jesus Hallelujah. Thank him for the blessings of salvation. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. We thank God for this special day, a day of remembrance, as was given to us briefly by Deacon Roseman, uh, by regarding our pastor, former pastor, Bishop W. L. Bonner. I want to thank God for him and for the blessing that he was to me personally. I remember it was in 1975 in Topeka, Kansas at our international convention. Pastor Bonner asked me if I would be his assistant pastor. And uh, I, of course, at that time I was a public school teacher and I wanted to understand what this would entail. And of course, it would mean that I would have to leave my job as a, as a public school teacher with the city of New York. And my wife was expecting our second child at the same time. It was a big decision and of course, after talking with her, of course, talking with the Lord, she said, all right, if it's the Lord's will, you feel it's the Lord's will, go ahead. And that has been a long time ago. 40 years as assistant pastor here under Pastor Bonner. And then since that time, about eight years as pastor succeeding him in this great church. I've been blessed by his ministry in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank God for what he was to me. We had no major incidents during my 40 years of assistant pastorship. Um, he didn't always agree with me. He was um, a no-nonsense man. As we said, a man of faith. And he was a builder. The Lord blessed him to be the uh, 
general contractor after the first contractor, Mr. Morrison, who was hired to work on this church, died. Pastor Bonner became the general contractor and by his uh, leading, the Lord blessed him to complete the job. I can remember the time when there were just four walls here and nothing else. The ceiling was out, of course. And, uh, and there was a question, what are we going to do? General contractors passed away. We have no, our church is uh, just in uh, the demolition phase of parts of it. And how are we going to make it? Pastor Bonner took the helm as general contractor. And the Lord blessed him to complete the work here to what you see as a greater refuge temple from three walls and no ceiling. And uh, I remember he taught us things that um, all the ministers of Greater Refuge Temple at that time had to assist in being laborers on the job as we worked to bring this building to a completion. I remember when being down in the basement and when we were uh, breaking up the concrete floor in the basement and taking out some of the pillars that were there and we would bring through a hole in the patio out there the debris and uh, we would fill the wheelbarrow up with picks pieces of uh, concrete and we would roll it into a truck was something that was not easy. I remember getting a wheelbarrow full of it and you know you start up that ramp going to the truck and if you don't have enough speed and energy you won't make it. And it wasn't good not to make it because you could fall to the side. No one could reach up and grab you like that but the Lord blessed gave us strength. I was not the only one. My brother Whitaker and Wayman and also Apostle Wilbur Jones and every other minister in Greater Refuge Temple was a part of the effort assisting our pastor in the uh, renovation of Greater Refuge Temple Church. And way up there, top of the dome where those lights are, I remember being up there. I wouldn't have gone that way unless I was following the pastor. And it's way up there when you get up there. And we worked there God blessed us. No accidents on the job. Certainly of any consequence. And here we are today enjoying the fruits of uh, his labor. And we thank God for it. He not only renovated Greater Refuge Temple. He built, uh, before it was Solomon Temple, it was the uh, Ark Church. Church of our Lord Jesus Christ in on Halleck and DeQuindra Street, the first one he built. The Lord blessed him with that. It was a beautiful church, a modern church. And from that, he went to Seven Mile Road and he built the church on Seven Mile Road, the one that is there now. And he, by the leading of the Lord, pastored five churches at one time. Uh, the one in Detroit, Greater Refuge Temple Church. He built the church in uh, Columbia, South Carolina, and also the one in Washington, D.C. And there was a church in uh, Richmond, Virginia, a church of the late uh, Bishop and Apostle Purnell that he pastored at the same time. He was a man with energy and faith in God Almighty. The Lord blessed him. And he would um, always encourage us to be faithful to the Lord and to find something to do to help the work of the Lord. And we thank God for him, for his encouragement. As was said by Deacon Roseman, he was a man of faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he would tell the rest of the preachers, say, look, all of my churches uh, are full of people. He would uh, encourage us with that uh, 
remark from time to time to keep working for the Lord. Just as the Lord has blessed me, he'll bless you also. Thank God for the memory of Chief Apostle William Lee Bonner. He was born the same year that my mother was born. And uh, my father was one year older. But we thank God that in his time, God blessed him, sent him here to New York City. And I became his assistant pastor. Thank God for that. It, it was a walk of faith also. For he was a man uh, who was determined, a man of faith. And to follow him was no easy task. But I thank God that we were blessed of the Lord together to work here. And, and also uh, efforts as dean of the Church of Christ Bible Institute. He, he would send me places from time to time. All, all of the churches that he pastored, I thank God I was able to go there and minister. Uh, during the earlier years of his uh, ministry here, he couldn't be but at one place at one time. So he would use whoever he could use to help him with the work. I remember before they built the uh, church there, it's called the um, Rapture Church that had one in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. But the rockets on the outside of it, the Lord blessed him under difficult circumstances to build that church. I was there before it was built, uh, did two week revival in the old church, the small one that he had in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he afforded me a chance to minister and also to work at the Church of Christ Bible Institute. And I thank God for him and for his ministry. Though saved under Bishop Lawson, I grew up under the ministry of Pastor William Lee Bonner. God bless his memory. And tonight at six o'clock on Facebook and YouTube and YouTube, Facebook and YouTube, there will be a uh, special video on uh, the life and ministry of Pastor W.L. Bonner. At six o'clock on YouTube and Facebook. You and you watch that, we encourage you to do so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See his ministry, look again, and worship with him and the people of God in Jesus' name. God bless you. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you. Thank you for your blessings, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Your hand upon us. Your blessings upon us, Lord. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, hallelujah. Put your hand upon us now. Bless your servant. Let your name be sanctified. Lord, let it be glorified in the midst of thy children, O God. At this time, bless your servant. And Lord, make us a blessing. We pray and we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. And amen. I want to call your attention to the book of Jude. The book of Jude. One of the shortest books in the uh, Bible. Um, just one chapter. The book of Jude. Right before Revelation and after 3rd John. The book of Jude. Because it's one chapter, one page, you just might miss it. But it's a powerful message that uh, we have in this one chapter book. The book of Jude. And we'll read verses 24 and 25. Jude, verses 24 and 25. It has been called one of the um, greatest and most beautiful doxologies you will find any place in the Bible. Verses 24 and 25. And the word of God reads, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, 
be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. I want to also read um, in the book of Ephesians. Uh, there is a beautiful doxology by Paul also, as he, I think it's the third chapter of Ephesians, as the apostle speaks to the people of God, verses 20 and 21. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end my subject our God is able our God is able. In a world in which we live that is filled with violence, division, racism, other kinds of strife that the child of God is confronted with along with others in the world, whether it's in the church or not, we live in a strife-torn world. Even where our system of justice and our standards of democracy are challenged like never before. Hallelujah. The child of God is, lives here also. And the faith in God sometimes is affected by the challenges to truth. When uh, even I remember uh, Mr. Giuliani, personal uh, lawyer to the former president, that's what is truth, you know. That's something like paradise. That's something that's so postmodern because people don't believe that there is absolute truth. Things are not true in and of themselves. It depends upon what you make of it. And in a world like that, when truth has eroded, when respect goes out of the window, and now, as Jude writes, because the truth is challenged, the biblical truth, it poses problems for the child of God. But our God is able. We're not left out here by ourselves to try and make it by ourselves. But God is still alive. And as the apostle said in that benediction in the Ephesians, he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Whatever you could imagine, my God's able to do it. Truth still matters. Truth is still truth. And the word of God is truth. Thank God that we here at Greater Memphis Temple believe in the inspired word of God. We believe, hallelujah, that God gave his word to his ministers and prophets years ago. And it's still true today. I mentioned to you the problems that we have, even for those who are going to seminary now. Hallelujah. The subjects have changed. The face of the, of the seminary is not like it used to be. Hallelujah. I remember when we would study theology, we, we knew right away what subjects we would be dealing with. We would deal with things like bibliology, the study of the uh, scriptures from bibliology to theology proper when you study about God. Then we would move to subjects dealing with uh, Christ and the Holy Spirit, and from that, we go to subject of Christology, dealing with Christ, and then from that, we will look at a subject like, hallelujah, uh, homotheology, they would call it, the doctrine of sin. And from the doctrine of sin, ecclesiology, the doctrine of the church. And then we will deal with eschatology, the doctrine of future things. Uh, it was clear as to where we were going, what we were going to do. But in this postmodern age, for the last 50 years plus, things changed. It's no more theology, it's a matter of theologies. 
you would study womanist theology, you would study black theology, you would study Asian theology, you would study, hallelujah, uh, Latin American theology, or theologies, different understandings, supposedly so, of the truth. It has brought more confusion in the, the minds of some who attend the seminary until it's difficult. Even today in the world in which we live, challenged by differences, lack of clear understanding of the truth. All of you, what's going on? But I thank God we can make it. We know what God has said. And that's not arrogance we speak that in. It's a matter of the fact that God has made himself known to mankind. God has spoken. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ has come into our world and blessed us through his sacrifice on the tree of Calvary. And we who are children of God can stand tall today. Hallelujah. And say, I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. He's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Anybody persuaded here today? I am persuaded. Hallelujah. But there are problems today as there were problems when Paul wrote to the Ephesians as well as to the uh, uh, Jude wrote to the people. Uh, one thing, Jude didn't say what group he was addressing except the people of God, sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Christ Jesus. Them that are sanctified, he was writing, writing to the church. One, somewhere in the mid-60s, Jude was writing to the church. This is a letter that Jude never intended to write. As the text will tell us, and Jude greets them in the first verse, and in the third verse he said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Jude wrote, but it wasn't what he had intended to write. He was going to, uh, if God had not changed his mind, write a letter about our common salvation. But circumstances at the time were of such that he needed to write the people of God to help them, to encourage them. Hallelujah. And to tell them about God's will and purpose and about the future, what would happen if they did not stay with the Lord. So Jude wrote to them, and the book of Jude contains some of the strongest language you can find any place else. Uh, the only thing comparable to this would be the second chapter of Second Peter, uh, for they bear close resemblance. That is the book of Jude and Second Peter chapter 2. But Jude wrote, under the strong influence of the Holy Spirit, he had to change his intended message to the church. And to encourage, to urge the saints to earnestly contend. The word contend here is one that is used often in sports. It speaks of a contest, fighting, struggling. Earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And there is a still a need today of us to urge the saints to contend. Don't give up because you had a test and it was difficult. Don't give up because you don't think you can make it. My God is able. Our God is able. Whatever God assigned to the hands of his children, God will accomplish it in the lives of his children. Hallelujah. Nothing can stop God from working in the midst of the church. It's up to us to earnestly contend. Fight the good fight of faith, Paul said. Lay hold on eternal life. Hallelujah. Jude encouraged them to keep on fighting as a child of God. And it was a need because uh, infiltrating the church at this time, there were serious errors by the errorists, by men who didn't believe God's word. They had, as stated in verse 4, for there were certain men that crept in unaware who were before of all ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness 
and denying the only Lord God and our Lord, Jesus Christ. There were people in the church at this time that it surreptitiously came into the church. You got to watch who you fellowship. And, and not only that, some change after they get in the church. And Jude had to deal with the problem. Certain men have crept in unawares. Hallelujah. Because uh, they say, I spoke in tongues. You don't know what they said in the first place. It's the witness of the Spirit in your life that helps you to be able to affirmatively say, yes, they're saved. But there were people back in those days, just like there are people now, who don't believe in the truth. And uh, there are mockers, scoffers, as Peter said, they were coming the last days, scoffers, saying, where is the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were since the beginning of creation. There is a need to be watchful, to be careful, prayerful, that God might direct us as we go along because everybody who says they're saved is not saved. And or they might have the Holy Spirit but they're woefully lacking in understanding. You can't, you can't put them out of the church. They just don't know what they're talking about. Just as Alexander the coppersmith, Paul rebuked him and there were others that were rebuked. But this is no Secret to those who know the word of God, as the apostle Paul would say when he was coming off of his last missionary journey, the third missionary journey, uh, when he got to the, hallelujah, island of Miletus, he sent for the elders of the church in Ephesus. Miletus is there, hallelujah, on the western coast of Asia Minor not far from Ephesus, where he called the elders to come and meet him there when he was going to Jerusalem for his final time. And the apostle gave them his testimony about how God had blessed him and how God had brought him this far, the third missionary journey he was on, and the Lord had witnessed to him that he was not going to go any further. This would be the last missionary journey. And the prophecy came even through one Agabus, the prophet, who prophesied and took Paul's belt and tied his own hands and said, this or thus will the Jews at Jerusalem do to the man that owns this girdle. Yeah, the girdle is a belt. It's a quite different thing from what now we might say. Okay, we get over that. And Paul said, also when they um, heard what was going to happen, his imprisonment and so forth, Paul said, why do you weep and you mean to break my heart? When he was with the elders there on the Isle of Miletus, they were sad because he said he was going to be apprehended, what the Jews would do to him at Jerusalem. And because of that, hallelujah, he, he was a man of faith. He stood up and said, don't even shed a tear. They fell on his neck and they kissed him and wished him well when they saw that they couldn't change the mind of the man of God. Paul, so the apostle Paul said to them, they at my leaders, take heed unto yourselves. These pastors he's talking to. And to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. And to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Paul said in verse 29 of Acts 20, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. That's the name he gave to grievous wolves. He gave to preachers looking to uh, steal members and or cause problems in the church. And he said, of your own selves arising up from the churches that you pastor, there would be, hallelujah, men who would speak perverse things to draw disciples after themselves. And he told them to watch and remember by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And he commended them to God and the word of God's grace. In other words, the prophecy had gone forth, not by Paul only, about trouble within the church world. Jesus talked about it. Apostasy or the falling away of the saints. 
Paul spoke in the book of 2 Thessalonians about apostasy also. And in other places, he talked about apostasy. Uh, he said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, so he said, Be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that day of the Lord or Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That word means apostasy. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And he went on to describe the one who would be the son of perdition. In other words, the prophecies had gone forth about trouble in the church that will come later on. And here we have at this time Jude writing because some people had gotten to the church and somehow or another they got to be ministers they thought or wanted to be and they were causing havoc in the church. Sometimes people say, you know, y'all you fuss too much. He ain't fussing. I'm trying to deal with error. Everything that you hear is not always what you should hear or it's not the word of God at least. That's why there's the encouragement that Paul told Timothy, who was left in charge of the work at Ephesus. He said, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's a need for those, as Ezekiel said, those who bear the word of the Lord to be shepherds with compassion also, as he said to Titus uh, and also to Timothy, that he that preaches the word of God should, hallelujah, understand what he's talking about. For there are many false teachers in the world. It's a sign of the time, right? As you look at the words of the apostle when he spoke unto the church also, this is a matter of the background to this. Uh, Paul talked about the times in which we're living. This know also in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times will come. Hard times would come. Grievous times would come. Men shall be lovers of themselves. Here is the character of the men of the end time. They will be covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, untruthful, and unholy. Without natural affection, truth breakers. Can't trust them. False accusers. Incontinent. Fierce. Despises of those that are good. Traitors they would be. Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. He said from such. Turn away. Hallelujah. For this sort are they that creep into houses. And lead captive silly women. No I didn't write that. Laden with sins. Led away with divers lusts. There's a need for watchful pastors. God said to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I'll give you pastors after mine own heart. I'll give you someone who loves me and who loves the word of God. And who will faithfully preach and teach the word of God. That's what the church will need. Hallelujah. Shepherds after God's own heart. Not hallelujah those who are howling prophets. Not someone like Balaam. Who said, hallelujah, he was called to go talk to Israel. And God told him, don't you go there. You can't curse whom I have blessed. But Balaam, hallelujah, because of his greed, uh, appealed to God. And God told him no. And then the third time God said, all right, but you're going to say what I tell you to say. Hallelujah. God protects his children. And Balaam, when he opened his mouth to curse Israel for the money that Balak had promised him, he blessed them. Hallelujah. God is not a man, he said, that he should lie or the son of man that would change his mind, right? Hasn't God spoken and God will do it? Has he not said it? Hallelujah. He'll make it come to pass. Our God is consistent. You can't be a servant of God and speak untruth. Remember, Holiness, hallelujah, or Christianity without holiness is a misunderstanding. You can't be a child of God and live for the devil 
and expect God to bless you. God calls for consistency, holiness, or Christianity without morality, is the way I usually say it, is an illusion. You're just fooling yourself if you're going to do one thing and preach another. God called for consistency in the life of a child of God. Uh, but the church that Jude was writing to in the middle 60s was having problems with ministers, people who called themselves ministers, who would preach one thing but live another thing, had a form of godliness, but they denied the power of God by the life that they lived. Don't tell me that God won't help you to live right. God will help you. He said the holiness, the spirit of truth, they talked about the Holy Ghost. He will lead and guide you into all truth, right? And Paul, rather Timothy, uh, Jude said unto them, the false teachers had secretly gained entrance into the fellowship of the saints and they had begun to teach erroneous, erroneous doctrine. Truth matters, refuge, right? Truth matters. It matters what we believe because we are a product of our beliefs. If you don't believe anything, it will show in the life that you live. You can't live without truth. Buy the truth, says the Bible, and sell it not. Hallelujah. Become a child of God and consistently pursue an understanding of God's word. Uh, because the word of God helps us to grow, shapes us. Truth matters in the name of Jesus Christ. So, our Lord Jesus said in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth. Truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. There's nothing like having a, a free mind, a free spirit. There's nothing like being able to stand up like the Apostle Paul and say, I know in whom I have believed. I am persuaded. Hallelujah. He's able to keep that that I have committed unto him against that day. Stand tall. As a child of God in this postmodern age, when they claim that there is no truth, there is truth. It's because of truth that we are here today. The preach, uh, the preach, W. L. Bishop W. L. Bana and Bishop R. C. Lawson preached the truth. Established this church by the command of God, and because of that, we're here today. And after 104 years, we're still standing because they preached the word of God. He was hallelujah, cry aloud, spare not, preacher. Hallelujah! When he came on the radio years ago, people turned to the stations and listened, and they were blessed of God. Miracles of all kinds were performed. And one day, Apostle W. Albana, Brother Vaughn as he was back then, came into the church in the early 40s because of the word preached by Bishop R.C. Lawson. Hallelujah. Thank God. That's how God adds to his word. That's how God adds to his church. He's calling men and women who would stand consistently tall in the word of God. We thank God for them. Truth matters, refuge. Hallelujah. I thank God for it. And the nature of the false teachers of the time of Jude, there were men. Hallelujah. And Paul spoke of them, or rather Jude spoke of them. In verses 8 and through 10, he said that they were irreverent. And they were disrespectful to authorities. They were disrespectful to authorities. Preachers need to be respectful to, to those that they are serving under. You know, you, you just don't say one thing and do another. Uh, respect, and Romans 13 teaches that also. Respect for leadership, hallelujah, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Paul said they were disrespectful in verse 8 of, of the book of Jude. Likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. They despise dominions. In other words, they despise authorities and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses and said, durst not bring against him a railing accusation. But he said, the Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in whose those things they corrupt themselves. And he went on to talk about, hallelujah, those who were in the church and they called themselves preachers, but they were disrespectful to the word of God, hallelujah, irreverent, 
Hallelujah. And not only that, they had turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. And it's in the book of Titus. Hallelujah. One and one. As well as in Titus chapter 2. When he said in chapter 2, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denial and godliness and worldly lust. We should be live well, how? Socially? Soberly, right. Godly? In this present world, God's calling for holiness of life from the church. In addition to all the tongues we speak in, there must be holiness of life. That's a testimony. That's a witness. Hallelujah. That we are a child of God. We need more people who will humble themselves before God. Be respectful of leadership. And live godly in this present world. Why? Looking for the blessed hope, right? Uh, looking for the blessed hope. The glory is appearing the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Gave himself for us. Hallelujah. In the name of our Lord. If you're looking for the rapture, your life ought to reflect that, right? It's just like if you tell your wife, I love you. Well, it ought to show in your actions. Don't hit her upside the head. That ain't no love. Elder Hunter, Elder Hunter liked that. Uh, and the sister didn't say a word. But life and testimony must agree. If you're a child of God. And you had, hallelujah, you had people in the time of Jude in the mid-60s. This is only about 35 years after the church started. You had problems then. You had men then who didn't act like they should have acted. And they were causing folks to backslide. It was so great until Jude had to write a letter. Hallelujah. In, in an urgent spirit and in tough language. Hallelujah. Oh, they turned the grace of God into last grievousness. And, uh, and they denied the authority of our only Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. It is shown in verses 8 through 13 of the book of Jude. These filthy dreamers, they defile the flesh, they despise dominion. Verse 8. Michael the archangel, we read that, continuing with the devil. He disputed about the body of Moses. So don't bring a railing accusation against him. And uh, they speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. Didn't have the Holy Ghost, just Speaking out of their own foolish minds, hallelujah, what they were speaking. And uh, he said, they deny the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jude said to the people of God, don't lose heart because of the current crisis. Don't you give up because you see increasing amounts of people not believing. That's something that uh, the Lord spoke about himself. Um, apostasy will come. Folks will turn away from the truth. But it is, doesn't mean that God is not able. My God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all. You can ask or think. According to what? The power that dwells in you. Thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit. Not human ingenuity. Not, hallelujah, human ability. Not the family you were born in. And not even the school that you studied at. The Holy Spirit that dwells within. Jesus said in his his uh, farewell address to them, John 14, that the Holy Spirit, I will not leave you comfortless. I will leave, I will send you another comforter, the comforter. Hallelujah, paracletos. I will send you help on the, right along, uh, hallelujah. Uh, at that time, I will send you, give you another comforter. And he will lead and he will guide you into all truth. You can't make it without the Holy Spirit as a child of God. Not human ability, I say again. The power of the Holy Spirit is what keeps us. Hallelujah. When Jesus was about to leave them on the Mount of Olives, chapter 1 of Acts, he said, Hallelujah, I will not leave you comfortless in John. Then he said to them, regarding the Holy Spirit and the power of God, you shall receive power, Acts 1 and 8, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. You can't witness properly without the Holy Spirit. That's why you have someone with the Reverend Doctor so-and-so with as many degrees as you have in the alphabet, hallelujah, behind their name. 
and you still don't believe in the Holy Spirit as a personal possession of a child of God. But if you believe, hallelujah, the word of God, not based upon your studies only, thank God for Refuge Temple. This is the Holy Ghost Church, a church that believes in the power of God, a comforter, someone alongside, someone to help us, hallelujah, in our thinking, someone to help us to order our thoughts right, someone to help us, hallelujah, to preach the word of God, teach the word of God, and live the word of God. Thank God for the Holy Spirit who helps us to believe that God is able according to the power that works in us in this day hallelujah of uh, postmodernism that's the philosophy of so many people where they just don't believe in truth and certainly absolute truth and you know when you make that kind of st statement about um, not there's no absolute truth you're contradicting your own philosophy you can't make an absolute statement if your faith or philosophy contradicts that, right? But that's the way the world is. Hallelujah. And we as children of God must stand firm in this day and time, no matter who comes up to you, what kind of degrees they might have. Hallelujah. If they don't speak the truth according to this word, the Bible says there's no light in them. Thank God light is sown for the righteous. Gladness for the upright in heart. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How many are grateful they are saved? How many thank God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. I thank God for salvation. Uh, not only to be able to shout to run around the church. Thank God for the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. He walks with me, the song says. He talks with me. Thank God he's there all the time. This is the way he walks. Therein you'll find rest for your soul. Oh, oh, child of God. Ah, uh, thank God for what he has done for you and what he is to you. Don't lose heart because of the present crisis. When the country is faced with the possible shutdown, if the Republicans don't get their act together and pass the budget, hallelujah. Uh, and you know, democracy is not something that is absolute and omnipotent. Look at what has happened so far in the country. Uh, God is not a Democrat nor a Republican, but God stands for truth. And thank God, the nations, he says in the word of God, that have forgotten God, they'll be turned into hell, right? America is not guaranteed victory on every hand. I love America, but I thank God for the truths that are greater than America. Hallelujah. Thank God for the truth. And God's truth is marching on. Hallelujah. God's fully aware of what's going on and God will deal with the situations in life. Hallelujah. Remember, judgment deferred is mercy extended. Ah, because we have forgotten God. Because our world, hallelujah, has forgotten God in so many ways and they are contending with God. It wasn't long ago that they took prayer out of the schools, and before and after they took prayer out of the schools, hallelujah, we saw differences, hallelujah. There was no moral compass that's guiding so many people, hallelujah. Uh, but our God is speaking to us through his word, hallelujah, about how we should live and what we should do. Uh, not only did they take prayer out of school, but they endorsed same-sex unions. Hallelujah. Jude speaks to that. Jude spoke of the certainty of the judgment of God that will fall upon people who disobey God's word. And he used Sodom and Gomorrah as a good example, right? In the book of Jude, verse 7, he said, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. The word fornication is a word that is broad in the Greek. It includes all kinds of sexual improprieties. Are you listening? And... Over to fornication and going after strange flesh, right? And set forth for an example, sufferings and the vengeance of eternal fire. God looked at the sickness and the sin that was in Sodom and Gomorrah. God told Lot, I want you to get out of here. Take your family and get out of here. Because of the sickness of that society. When there were some angels that came in, hallelujah, to the city. And the men of the city were so given to perverseness. 
spirit of sodomy. Uh, they told Lot, bring the men out so we can know them. That word know has a reference to sinful, unnatural sexual desires. That's how bad they were. And our society is right behind it today. I know folks don't like that. I know there are some people I hope they won't come marching at us down the street, but that's all right. The truth is the truth. But our God is able to keep that which we commit unto him against that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So told Lot, God told Lot, get out of here. Take your family and get out of this place. Uh, flee to the mountains away from the sin. Come on up higher. Oh, the church has to be higher than the world in her standards. Hallelujah. So the angels snatched them when they were too slow in going away. And Lot's wife turned and looked back with the desire for the good things of Sodom. And she was turned into a pillar of salt. Are you listening? Are you listening? Our world has gone too far. They have changed God's order for creation. Hallelujah. Even to the point, hallelujah, of endorsing sodomy and saying you better not say anything against it. You might have trouble yourself. I've got to speak the truth. Hallelujah. Too many are afraid to speak the truth. I love people, but there are certain sins that when you have them attached to your life, you can't be active in the church. God said it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help me, right? And then God made the woman for the man. Heterosexuality is God's way. Heterosexuality, one man, one woman in marriage, till death do your part. But there were some in society who feel that they know more than God. God has given us a decree regarding human sexuality. And they have changed their mind. They have changed in the law. Uh, they can change the laws all they want, but they can't change God's word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you listen. And Jude said, to remember the certainty of the judgment of God, look at Sodom. Look at Gomorrah, how God did there. Uh, God's word is true. We need to look to the past at time to understand who God is and how God works. Uh, what God has done sealed, what God will do. God has a, a problem with certain sins and we ought to have a problem with it ourselves. Are oh, you listening? Not only that, Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, look at the angels in verse 6 of the book of Jude, right? The angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own understanding, or habitation rather. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of that great day. Uh, when he tried a coup in heaven, when Satan tried to unseat God, uh, when he tried to take the place of authority in heaven, this is a pre-Adamic material before he had created Adam. But he had the angels were here and they were with him during heaven and Satan, hallelujah, spoke to the angels and, and, and some of them agreed with Satan. And when they tried to unseat God, the Lord Jesus said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. God cast him out right away. God is omnipotent. God has all power. You mess with God, you're in serious trouble. Hallelujah. And here Jude is cataloging certainties of God's character and way. God will bring judgment. Uh, he might not judge them in your time in the way you want to, but God will bring judgment. That's what Jude appeals to. He says these false teachers will get their day. When God will take care of things. And when Satan was cast out of heaven, cast into the earth, hallelujah, the resultant judgment of Satan caused the earth to be buried beneath the waters for a long period of time. But there was a time that God spoke, let dry land appear. Authoritative fiat of God. God spoke. And because God spoke, it happened just like God said. One day God is going to speak to this world. Hallelujah. And the sins and the nations that forget God, the Bible says they're going to be turned into hell, right? And he speaks about Michael, the archangel, and his testimony. And the angels in heaven that followed Satan have, became, have become the demons of our world. Those who work with Satan, but they're all fallen. 
Uh, hallelujah. And they can't overthrow God. They can't get back into heaven. They can't storm the heavens and take God's position away. God is God. He will always be God. He is omnipotent. He has all power. All power, Jesus said, in heaven and earth. It's in my hand. All power. Hallelujah. All power is in the hands of our creator. And he is giving examples of judgment as a reminder to the people that God will not tolerate sin too long. He's got a time when he's going to say it's all over. In the book of Revelation, I think around chapter uh, 18, there was a mighty angel in heaven, hallelujah. These are tribulation scriptures. Uh, who lifted up his hand towards heaven, had his right foot on the land and left foot on the sea, and he cried out loud, time! There shall be no more time. That word time, kairos time, time of opportunity. Won't be any time for you to get saved. Won't be any time to run the refuge temple and tarry or tarry at home. Time is up. This is God's position. God knows the time. God knows the day. God knows the hour. If you don't repent, God's got a time. Hallelujah. When the rapture will take place. God has a time when the judgment will fall upon the earth. Uh, examples of the power of God and the mind of the eternal God. He knows everything and God knows everything, I say, simultaneously. He knows them all at the same time. Can you not trust someone who knows everything and knows it at the same time? And God has eternally always known everything. There wasn't a time that God didn't know what was going to happen in the world. God knew that I would say this this morning. Exactly. Eternally, he knew that. That's the kind of mind of God we have. Someone that knows everything. I mean, it's hard to fathom, but it's true. God knows everything. You can't slip up on God. You can't surprise God. He knows everything. And our God, because he is omnipotent, because he has all power, and because he knows everything, he's omniscient. And not only that, God is omnipresent. I use those words, but you've gotten to know them now. Those who didn't study them, hallelujah. It means that God has all power. God knows everything. And the other word is omniscience. He knows everything. That's omniscience. But he's uh, omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time. No one has this ability or these qualities all these attributes, and uh, these are the attributes of God that we call incommunicable. In other words, they exist in God only, and God cannot transfer them to anyone else. No one else God can make omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipotent. He's the only one like that. Hallelujah. We might have some of the other attributes of God. We have love. We have peace. We have power, but not all power. But I thank God. Only in the one God. As Psalm 68 would say, God has spoken once, twice. Have I heard this? That power belongs to God. He's the one who distributes power. He's the one that helps us to do what we do. He is all powerful. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. And he's the one who knows the day because of his omniscience. You know, it's knowledge that he has. He knows when the angel will stand. But the angel will follow his command. Go stand upon the sea and upon the land. Lift your hands to heaven and say, time is up. The jig is up. And bring judgment upon the world for God Almighty. I thank God that he's able. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. God is able. But he's given us some of that power. He's placed in us his Holy Spirit. Thank God for that. He's given us some knowledge. Thank God for that. And we should have sense enough to know that we as a child of God should live to the glory and to the honor of God. Tell him thank you. Thank tell, him, tell, tell him thank you, sir. And in spite of the fact that they are gainsayers, in spite of the fact that they are false prophets, in spite of the fact that they are false teachers, you can still make it. You have enough knowledge of God you have enough experience with God. 
You've been saved long enough to know that my God is able to keep that which I commit unto him against that day. How many believe that? He can keep it. Give him your life. Give God your life. Give God, hallelujah, your soul, your heart, body, mind, and spirit. God will keep you. He will keep you. That's what Paul said in faith. He will keep that which I commit unto him. You got to give God your life. That's why Jude would say, hallelujah, building up yourselves in your most holy faith. Hallelujah. Believe in God. Trust in God. Build yourself up by the power and the help of God. Let God bless you. Refuge Temple, God is not only able, but God is willing. He is willing to help you. Uh, thank God for a God of compassion and love. Thank God for someone who believes in us. He has blessed us, saved us, justified us. Thank God. That word justify means we're in the right place. It speaks of a positional holiness. We are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We're in Christ Jesus. We used to be in the world uh, under the curse and the control of Satan. Hallelujah. The God of this world. But thank God he has placed us in him. Sanctified us in Christ Jesus. We are in Christ. If you have the Holy Spirit, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man's in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Aren't you glad that you're saved? Aren't you glad that you're in Christ Jesus? Aren't you glad? Can't you tell the difference? Thank God. I don't have to wake up on a Sunday morning regretting what I did the night before. Thank God I wake up on a Sunday morning Take a shower. Get ready for church. Come to praise and magnify the Lord. Thank God for power in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Our God is able. He's able. He's able. He's willing. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for a willing God. God is not only able, but God is willing. Nothing starts right. Nothing proceeds right. Nothing, hallelujah, ends right apart from God. You need God in your life. He is the author and the finisher of our faith, right? He began this walk uh, as he was 12 was a, what? Uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, Right? He started this. He's the beginner, author of our faith. And he will help us in our walk with God. He will keep that which we commit unto him. God will keep our lives because our God is able. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Remember the word of the Lord says in 127, Psalm 127 and 1. Hallelujah. Except the Lord builds the house. The laborers labor in vain. You can't build a church without God's help and guidance. Thank God that we know that here at Refuge Temple. We, you know, it's one thing to get in the back room and talk with some people and, and have meetings and uh, try to plan things, yes. But remember, all plans must be submitted to God Almighty. This is God's church. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 18, Upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Satan can't win, hallelujah, when it comes to God's church. Ah, uh, the church will stand. Thank God for it. And the word of God will be our guide. Because the psalmist said in Psalm 119 and 89, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. It's settled. He has determined before time ever came that he would have a church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Satan will fight, but he can't win. And Jude preached the word of God unto them, telling them, hallelujah, our God is able to keep that which we commit unto him. Our God is able. Hallelujah. His church will be successful. Satan will fight, but he can't win. Keep that faith refuge simple. Keep on believing. Uh, you are going to be triumphant. 
He's able to do what? Exceedingly, says Paul in Ephesians 2, and abundantly, super abundantly, way above what you can even ask or think. God's able to do it. That's the kind of God that we serve. God is able to keep that. Give him your life. Let him bless you. Hallelujah. And you will be successful. Everyone that's in Christ Jesus who gives his life to God will be triumphant. Hallelujah. One preacher used to say, you can't lose with the stuff I use. Well, you can't lose with Jesus Christ, our Savior. He's able to keep us. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that which we commit unto him, give him your life. You can't keep it like you should. Give it to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. He's not only willing, but he's able. Hallelujah. He's able. His personal power is sufficient to accomplish what he has proposed. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the prophet Isaiah said in 54 and 17, no weapon that's formed against you will prosper. Yes, they might try to plan your doom. There are folks that are trying to uh, cause you to be differently, be different rather. But if you're a God's child, you're going to make it. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn it. As a child of God, I know it gets hard at times. You get tired at times. As the prophet Isaiah said, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. Hallelujah. But he that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mount up on wings like eagles. Run, not be weary. Walk and not faint. Everybody gets tired, but God's there. Hallelujah. Hey, you're going to make it, old child of God. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. And God will bless you to be victorious. Which coming back to a church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish or, blemish or any such thing in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Confidence in God. He will keep you from falling. He will present you faultless. His presence, or oh, his presence with exceeding great joy. Here is supreme confidence. God will keep us. Hallelujah. In the face of trials, uh, what shall separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. What? Who? Nobody. Hallelujah. You can't be stopped as a child of God. How many believe that today? The devil can't stop you. You have to agree with him and allow him to make you do things. But as a child of God, if you have the Holy Spirit, you don't have to. You can say like Jesus, get behind me. Hallelujah. Tell him, get behind me. Hallelujah. Oh, and let God have his way. Remember, our God is able. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly of all things that we ask or think. Way beyond, super abundantly. Whatever you can think about, God can do it better than that. Everything we ask or think. He's able to keep that which we commit unto him against that day. God is. That's how he first declared himself to Moses in Exodus chapter 3. He said, I am that I am. I live because I live. The grounds of my existence are in me. I don't depend upon anything or anyone outside of me. God is. Strength. Joy of my life. Thank God. How many believe that today? God is the strength of your life. Joy of your life. You can make it. You will make it. Hallelujah. As a child of God. But you got to give God your life. Hallelujah. As a child of God. Give him your life. Let him keep it. He will keep it. Hold on to the truth. Because just like there were false teachers in the day of the apostle Jude and others. There are false teachers today. And you got to stand firm. On what you know to be truth. Hallelujah. Uh, Paul said, and there are people today who say, well, that's old school. You are not, you are still holding on to that. Well, the apostle said in 2 and 2 of 2 Timothy, uh, that which I, uh, keep that which I committed unto you. 
Hallelujah. Keep that. Hold on to it. Don't let it go. If you're a child of God, things I, uh, I've committed unto you, keep that. Stand upon the truth of God. Let God bless you. Hallelujah. Don't, don't worry about newness. If it's too new, it ain't true. Yeah, this, 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 this stuff has been around here for 2,000 years. It, it will not change. Uh, it's only old in the mind of the critics. Hallelujah. As Peter was said, the scoffers would come in the last days saying, where the promise of his coming? And nothing has changed since the fathers fell asleep. Peter said, this they are willingly ignorant of that one day with the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. Time means nothing to God. God is eternal. God dwells in the eternal now. Time means nothing to God. That's only for us to measure, to plan, and to work in. But God is, hallelujah, eternal. These are words about God you need to remember when you're tested by Satan. He's eternal. He always was and he always will be. You know, there was one person, Job, a man of God, a faithful man of God, who, who, who was tested and Job got a little perturbed at one time with God. And God let him talk and his friends talk for a long time. Then God said, all right, Job, stand up on your feet like a man. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the world? When the sons of God shouted for joy, when they praised and magnified the Lord. Hallelujah. And God said, in essence to Job, you haven't been around long enough. You don't know enough to talk back to me. Pull up your pants and stand up like a man. Stand up for Jesus. You soldiers of the cross, lift high the royal banner. Don't let it suffer loss. One victory unto another victory. Hallelujah. God will lead his armies, his children on. One day he's coming for the church. I want, I want to be in that rapture. Anybody want to be in the rapture? You want to be there? Keep on walking with God. And remember, our God is able. God bless you. Thank you. He's able and willing, but God has a standard. The standard is holiness. And the individual who expects to be a part of that rapture must remember that God has said, coming for a church, without spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. He's coming for men and women. Hallelujah. Who are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, washed in the blood of the Lamb. And if you're here today and you're not saved, come on down. Come be saved. Come give yourself to the eternal God. Let him bless you. Salvation is a gift of God. He's coming for a people that's ready by faith to live with him throughout all eternity. If you're not ready yet, come on, come on and get ready. It doesn't take long. doesn't take a whole lot. It's by faith alone. Justification is by faith alone. If you want to be saved, come on down. The Apostle Peter said on the first day of the church, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you want to be saved, the Holy Ghost is a gift. A gift of the presence of God himself in your life. Come on down. Repent. Tell the Lord you're sorry. Ask him to forgive you of any and all things that you might have said or done against his will. Or sins of omission. You failed to do God's will. If you're here, come on down. Let God bless you. He stands calling. Hallelujah. He stands calling you now. Come unto me all who labor 
and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you learn of me I'm meek and I'm lowly in heart you'll find rest for your soul come on down come on down don't be ashamed we all walk these aisles one day walking into power walking into the baptism of the Holy Spirit it is yours today to enjoy if I were you I would let God bless me yes Lord Jesus just believe just repent Give up on God. Why is he? He won't give up on you. Thank you, Jesus. If you want to be baptized, let the minister know. If you want to be baptized, let him know.
Anyone for fellowship? Anyone that's baptized in the Holy Ghost? Uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance, you'd like to be a member of Greater Refuge Temple Church. You may come down and receive the right hand of fellowship. Anyone for fellowship? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, he's able. Our God is able. Thank you, Jesus. Having struggles in life, our God is able to bring you through victoriously. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.
for the praise team for singing and for the head of our music department. <laughs> Sister Jennifer Johnson, she's all decked out in her red. Even her mic cover is red. That was no accident, Jennifer. Don't even look. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, we thank God for the souls for baptism. Made the decision that water baptism is the second step. Second step in the salvation process. The first step is repentance. Repent and be baptized. And the third, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Looking and praying for those who are baptized. Our noon day prayer. Monday through Friday, 12 until 1 o'clock. Uh, tomorrow we will close because of the holiday. But uh, the um, telephone line will be open for those who'd like to share in prayer for half an hour on tomorrow. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be blessed of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank God for all things. Let us stand. Let us stand. And remember, our God is able. It's the ability of God, not my strength, not your strength, but God's ability that we should rest in and be assured in. Lifting holy hands without wrath and without doubting, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Unto him be glory, majesty, dominion, world without end, through Jesus Christ, double Lord, and let God's children say, Amen. God bless you. goodness and your mercy.